So stories have this strange and significant hold over us. In trying to understand how we shape them, we can see how they're shaping us back. From the beginning, mythology has influenced and informed many storytelling practices. But in this hyper-connected era, we're seeing a new form being applied that allows for an immersive and an inclusive experience, transmedia storytelling. Hi, my name is Anupriya, and in this essay, we shall be seeing how mythology has not just created this form, but also a need for it by looking at itihasic narrative traditions thriving in India. Transmedia storytelling, simply put, is the practice of designing, sharing, and participating in a cohesive story experience across multiple mediums. Henry Jenkins, who actually coined the term, also laid out the principles for a property to be truly considered transmedia, some of which we shall explore in more detail. While there are many, many examples of transmedia storytelling, for the purpose of this essay, I shall be looking at two of the contemporary transmedia properties, the Star Wars franchisee and the Marvel Cinematic franchisee. I've chosen to look at these two properties because both of them contain a body of narrative that has spanned many, many years and have a fan base that is at a global scale. But more importantly, both the properties are pioneers in adapting transmedia experiences, both as a viable business and as a platform for creators and consumers. In ancient Indian context, a story is considered to be Itihas if the writers have witnessed the story. Itihas then refers to two particular epics, the Ramayana and the Mahabharat. Now when most people talk about these, they tend to mean the Sanskrit text of Ramayana attributed to Valmiki and Mahabharat attributed to Vyas. Both the authors have featured as characters in their respective epic. However, most of the narrative versions of the epic, the way they reach to us, are a composite of the Sanskrit version and other retellings, thus blurring the boundaries of what is actually Itihas. So for many, Itihas is not some text-based static stories, but rather long-living narrative traditions. As we shall see, these dominant mythic narratives have not only inspired and influenced contemporary stories, but the connection between the old and the new is not limited to stories, but rather goes into storytelling itself. So then how do we check if mythology is the original mode of transmedia storytelling? Well, an excellent place to start would be looking at specific cases of commonalities and seeing how the characteristics are embodied in the principles. A good transmedia story allows for multiple storylines while making moving from one story to another rewarding. Coming across common story elements fosters the story world's unity. Not much is known of S.H.I.E.L.D. in MCU's Iron Man. But by Captain America the Winter Soldier, the organization and its people are just as complex as the story world. In Mahabharat, it's difficult to pinpoint one cause of war as it didn't just happen because of Bhishma's adherence to his oath or Shakuni's scheming to get his revenge, but a synergy of these and many more stories that made the war seem as important as it was inevitable. Not everyone will consume all the stories, but by following as many as they can, they'll see how all these fit in together in a continuity. Like its parent comic universe ecosystem, MCU is venturing into multiverses, where iterations of characters and plot points exist. So this allows audiences' familiarity with the material to be rewarded and gives the freedoms to the creators to explore possibilities without worrying about the continuity. Despite having several retellings and adaptations, what makes the Itihasic narrative traditions of Ramayan unique is the self-awareness of its own multiplicity. In Adhyatam Ramayan, when an exiled Ram persuades Sita not to accompany him, she bursts out saying, Countless Ramayan have been composed before this. Do you even know one where Sita does not go with Ram to the forest? Multiplicity thus becomes a tool in storytelling that allows each of the pre-existing narratives to be opened up for reinterpretation and reimagination. 
In transmedia storytelling, certain incidents in the story world can set up infinite possibilities for new stories to emerge from. In MCU, for instance, the blip is one such story event, the consequence of which are substantial for viewers and creators, be it for comic effect or for dramatic ones. Even fans have expressed what the blip would be like for them. The Itihasic traditions too have offered a space for different levels of immersive experience, be it by visiting puja ceremonies and chanting Hanuman Chalasa verses, by visiting real world pilgrim sites like Chitrakoot, or by reading Ramayan 3392 AD, a futuristic retelling for personal recreation. These examples from the tradition and the property show how they are allowing immersion in the story and the story world. The brilliance of Star Wars is that it goes beyond passive consumption and allows for actively experiencing and extracting takeaways. The franchise's Galaxy's Edge theme park in California, USA is fashioned as a trading outpost set in the fictional planet Batu. Visitors like characters in Star Wars can use local Batuian Spira, a within world currency, as legal tenders in the park to collect souvenirs and purchase merchandise. Now the Itihasic traditions too have extractable elements that are linked to the daily lives of the followers. In the Ramayan, Bharat, refusing the crown in Ram's absence, serves as his proxy. He takes Ram's padukas, his slippers, and places them on the throne during his brother's exile. Considered to be Ram's symbolic divine footprints, padukas have been an object of veneration for his followers and can be seen in homes and temples. So a story world must be as interesting as the story set in it. This is where world building in transmedia comes in. Continuing with Star Wars Galaxy's Edge example, most of the visitor facing staff have an interesting fictional world backstory who call everything in the park by their within world name and serve visitors the food a Star Wars character might eat. Ramayan is a narrative of the travels of Ram. It is thus primed for a geographical exploration of its Itihasic story world. So much so that IRCTC launched an 18-day Sri Ramayan Yatra, a special pilgrimage train tour that fulfills many of the devotees' dreams of entering the world of Ramayan by visiting places that Ram travelled during his exile. In a transmedia experience, the chunking of the stories creates multiple entry points into the story world. Like the events in MCU's Moon Knight series happen after the Infinity Saga, but in consuming this new story, fans are still entering the MCU, albeit from a new viewpoint. This reality is how Itihasic narratives have also thrived. I wasn't introduced to Mahabharat from its very beginning. Initially, I understood it as a battle between two sets of brothers that ends with just one of them winning. But over time, as I kept coming across more stories spanning several generations leading up to the events and following past it, each narrative stitched up a larger story world in my head. So we all have our own point of narrative initiation. Everything that happens before it becomes the backstory and everything that happens after it becomes the aftermath. Stories don't have to just say or be one thing, but rather have the narrative capacity for diverse experiences. To explore this, transmedia storytelling often shifts the point of view across the narratives. Like in MCU, for Steve Rogers, passing the mantle of Captain America to Sam Wilson seems like a sweet act. But for Sam, it becomes a complex issue of dealing with racism, redefining what it means for a black man to be Captain America. Many creators do retellings of Ramayan through its secondary characters. For example, Anand Neelkanten in his book narrates the story from Ravan's viewpoint who sees himself as a challenger to the dharmic hegemony rather than as a villain. So both the examples show how offering subjectivity can instigate yet invite us into the story's core conflict. So these transmedial commonalities between media franchisee and mythologies are not just coincidental. Mythology has been cultivating this need for transmedia storytelling. It has in fact created a deep 
blueprint in a collective psyche for a transmedia experience. This can be observed by two macro phenomena. From a purist lens, mythology becomes about seeking the actual source or the right approach to the stories. This has the potential to dismiss or dictate the larger discourse through exclusions. Take for instance the critical edition of Mahabharat, an ambitious project by Bori where scholars studied over 1200 versions of the epics over 50 years to compile the original text. Now it's a literary masterpiece in its own right, but it is still a hypothetically constructed text formed in the last century, driven by the need to see the story in its correct form. But a consequence of this need is that new public investigations and interpretations are deemed at best misguided and at worst malicious. Seen in this light, the attempts to establish a canonical Mahabharat is like chopping down the branches to preserve a single vine. Likewise, in 2014, when Lucasfilm declared Star Wars expanded universe material non-canonical, it meant that 38 years worth of all officially licensed story world material outside of the theatrical films was suddenly not acknowledged by the creators. Expectedly, many fans were disappointed. Be it Star Wars or Mahabharat, the tension comes due to the reluctance of an authority figure not wanting to indulge in a story claim or a concern that isn't canon. This dismissal hurts fans and followers because it's their investment that is going down the drain. But while some scholars and many self-appointed guardians use the text as a crutch to control, what about the text itself? Looking at the epic, technically the Mahabharat we are reading today is an account of the narration by Ugrashava Sauti, who is giving us an account of Rishi Vaishampayan providing an account of Vyasa's composition of the story of Bharat. This story within a story framing is a prevalent technique used in many literary texts where layers of conversation weave the whole story. These layers sort of distance us as consumers from the actual story event, indicating that understanding this event through a primary source is not as crucial as experiencing the event through the interaction between the characters. While the MCU begins with Infinity Saga, a starting and a pivotal story arc, a viewer today does not have to consume it or take up the Herculean task of watching all subsequent movies to enjoy what MCU has to offer, although at times that can feel like a homework. With diverse new material like Moon Knight and Shang-Chi, MCU is keeping its door open for new fans, allowing them to create their own path in exploring the story world. It's clear that the primary text, Vyasa's Mahabharat or MCU's Infinity Saga, is foundational to the discourse but not for its engagement. So these two opposing phenomena of trying to contain a story by enforcing a text and the openness afforded by the text itself creates a cyclic pattern of content being rediscovered, resisted and then revered. This dance of discourse keeps pulling in creators, consumers and critics into a continuous conversation. As we have seen, Etihasic traditions and by extension mythologies in many ways can be considered the original mode of transmedia storytelling, having created not just the narratives as a de facto examples, but also a need in us for a transmedia experience. Thank you all for watching and coming on this journey with me. You can follow me for more mythology and storytelling related content. Until next time.